Right, today we're at Brown and Aston Fisheries. We're on my favourite lake, which is Butts Lake, and today I'm going to show you how to catch on these and these. Micros and Expander, couldn't be more simpler. Bait bill for today is about £2.50, and you can catch a million fish on them, believe me. So, bait preparation. Pellets is such a simple bait. All I've got <clears throat> is some expanders. Now, obviously there's a million different ways to prepare expanders. You hear about it the whole, all the time. Now I've got a trusty old, um, I've still got a trusty old pump that I use, if I'm honest with you. There's loads of different ways. Like I say, you can put them in the fridge, you can do, your, you know, I just like to do them when I get on the bank. I know I can do a certain amount on the bank and it's always done for when, for when I'm ready to start fishing. Now when I get there, all I do is fill my pellet pump up, do it as you used to do, I pump my pellets, let the air out, let them all sink. And all I literally do is drain the water off until the pellets are literally just covered. And then what I do then is I put the lid back on, I pull the water back out, uh, sorry, I pull the air back out. So I just pump them again. So they're under pressure. Then all I do is I leave them on my side tray. Micros, all you need is a few micros. Here at Aston, uh, it's fishery pellets. It's quite simple. I put the micros in there dry, cover them with water. Um, I leave them for probably five or six minutes, something like that. Um, and then just drain the water back off and I leave them on my side tray. Ruffle them around just before I'm ready to go fishing and they're all soaked up and they're all lovely. Right, I'm just gonna run you through my terminal tackle. Uh, now pellet fishing is so basic uh, and that's why I like it if I'm honest. Uh, but just going on to what I actually use, um, elastic wise, I use a microbore. It's, in, it's the orange microbore, which is a five to seven. Now I use this elastic if you're not sure what you're gonna hook. If it's gonna, it could be a four ounce uh, F1 or it could be a four pound carp. And this is why this elastic's so versatile. I always use it in a short kit. So there's not a lot of it, but it's soft enough on the strike to be able to withstand uh, any size fish. Now terminal tackle couldn't be simpler. I, I, have, I only tie my rigs on four different lines throughout the year. Um, and in this case for like my F1 rigs, I tie them all on 016. I do this for a few simple reasons. One, because it's, it's quite heavy and it's stiff and it makes the rig versatile. Now, but what I mean by that is, if I make a tray of rigs up, they're not just to be used over the winter time. I can actually use them in the autumn, summer because it's made up on a thick main line because to me, I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. Now, the stiffer and the heavier the main line without being silly, the better in my opinion. So I fish 016, hybrid mono, um, and that's dead simple, dead supple and, and nice and thick. Moving on to my hook lens, um, I've quite recently, last 12, 12 months or so, I've been going on to, uh, to fluorocarbon. Um, I do honestly believe it makes a difference. Some people you know, may say it doesn't, but in my fishing, it gives me more confidence and that's what I'm more bothered about, whether you're, fish, whether you're fishing normal monos or whether you're fishing uh, fluorocarbon, I think it's a confidence thing. Uh, and this time of year, throughout the winter, I've fished 011 fluorocarbon uh, to a size 18 hook. That's been generally my, my pellet uh, fishing approach. Like I say, it's dead, dead simple. Um, and that's really the terminal tackle you need. So always think about thick main lines. You know, we have been silly, 015, 016, that sort of uh, main line. Something that's nice and robust, nice and thick, so it doesn't tangle. Uh, and then obviously your hook length, that's the main thing. Um, for F1s, um, I normally fish a four inch hook length, uh, just because it's nice and positive. Um, and then for carp or for, for anything a little bit bigger, I fish six. And going down to my rig, like I say, I use short kits for everything. I use them for nearly all my fishing now. Um, I, I believe it gives you a big advantage on a lot of different things. The amount of elastic you can run through them, the fact that they don't bend, the, you know, how close they come when, when you're trying to net the fish. Um, so yeah, short kits are massive in my fishing. Float wise, um, the floats are actually handmade by me, uh, by, uh, by a company for me. Uh, I design the floats, um, so what I look for in a pellet float is something that's short and that you can be fishing straight away. So the wire stem, uh, obviously for stability uh, and the fact that it stays, once you, put the, once you put the bait in and you blow your rig over the top, it stays intact and it stays nice dead straight. So a nice wire stem, a slim body and, and a short bristle. Now a short hollow bristle is what I use just purely because visibility for the hollow side of things. And I, now I keep them nice and short. So when you do lower your rig, everything's instant. So you're fishing straight away because the amount of times that you get bites instantly with pellet fishing, um, 
you need, uh, as I say, like a short, especially short bristles, so a short flow all round. Like I said before, all my rigs uh, are made up on 016, so that's, you know, all the way down. Shotting. Uh, now, I keep shotting dead simple. Uh, I have a spread bulk, but I, cut, I have a, a tight spread bulk. I have my first one straight above my four inch hook length, which again, I said is O11 uh, fluorocarbon to an 18 hook. Uh, but the difference is with, um, with pellet fishing to normal fishing, I mean, it's only probably two foot deep and I've used the 0.3 float. Now, I like to use heavy, heavy floats for this style of fishing. The simple reason is because when I put my, when I, when I put my bait in and I lower my, my, my rig over the top, I don't want it to move. Um, you know, I, I need it to be dead stem, dead stable. Um, so I have big, big, big dropper shot. Uh, these are all nines, uh, as you can see there. They take, they take uh, six number nines. Um, and then what I generally have, any trimming shot that I need to 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 make my rig sit perfect, I actually have under my float. They're number thirteens. There's two number thirteens. The reason I do this is two quite quite simple things to be honest one it helps cut through the surface tension so when i'm lowering my rig down uh, by having them trimming shot below the directly below the float it helps pull the float through any skim or surface tension that's on that's on the top uh, and also um, it acts as a, a depth marker so for instance uh, if i get tangled if i pull for a break or anything because there's two number 13s, the chance of them moving is very, very slim, especially on 016. So um, it's quite a nice depth marker for myself. So if, for instance, if I want to move up, up an inch or if I lost my depth, I can just pull it straight back down to the number 13s and I'm back down to where, to where I, I were originally fishing. Uh, I always use back shot on all my rigs, whether it's, uh, apart, apart from my shallow rigs, but on all my bottom rigs, I always use back shot. Back shot give you a massive advantage in my opinion. What you've got to bear in mind with back shot is obviously they don't they don't they don't affect the capacity of the float. Um, I use t nines or eights. I not generally use a, a big back shot, and what they do is they they, they create um, less movement in your float. So, for instance, if you today's nice, it's we've got nice conditions, but when you haven't got nice conditions, what they allow you to do is your pole to be able to move the line between your float and your tip to be able to move about and your float doesn't actually get interfered. Um, so in my opinion, that's mega important. It's really important because like I say, you want that float to go in, sit sit stable and sit there. So any sort of movement above the float, your back shot actually withstand that rather than your float in itself. I still use Dacron connectors, uh, call me old fashioned. I know there's a lot of different ways uh, to connect your elastic nowadays. I use Dacron connectors. The Dacron connectors that are, uh, that are out at Browning, in my opinion, I, I, I like them and, and they just suit the way I fish. Like I said, there's many different ways to collect, to collect your, your elastic, but this one is the one I, I use. Uh, it's nice and soft, it's a nice rubber. So for instance, there's times where you've been, I have been, believe it or not, I know time, I know it's not very often, but I have been stuck in places, reeds, trees, etc. and you pull for a break. When the elastic comes back, because it's a nice soft rubber, it doesn't affect your tip, it can't break anything. Um, the, the Dacron itself is nice and stiff, so it keeps, it keeps the, the rig away from the pole, which again is mega important, especially when you've got little pots on and things like that. Um, failing that, in my opinion, it's a dead simple way of fishing, really easy. These rigs can, can more or less cover any you know any eventuality on these style snake lakes right so i'm just going to talk talk through um the the basic approach really of pellet fishing uh, as i say it's really simple and that's why i like it um now one of the biggest things in pellet fishing especially on these snake lakes is depth depth is massively important where the fish want to sit um you know throughout the day is is as i say it's massive especially in winter i mean you won't think it today but we are still in february so for instance, uh, the different depths. Now the, the answer to the depths situation is, I don't know where they're gonna be. Um, now, what you need to do is, it's trial and error more than anything. But what I will say is, when you get to these typical snake lakes, um, for instance, you're gonna have like three different depths in, a, in, in essence. You're gonna have, um, you know, going up the far shelf, you're gonna have down the middle, going up the far shelf and across. Uh, they're your three different depths really. Um, and as it stands here, they're not massively, it's not a massive incline or anything like that, but they are, there is three different depths. Now, if it were to come to summertime, uh, obviously the fish feeding, looking for bait, they're going to be across. They're going to be in the shallowest water they can get. Whereas this time of year, that's not necessarily the case. Um, so what you need to do is you need to try and find out which depth the fish, fish feeding at. Now, 
like I've said before, you don't know what depth they're going to be in. So the easiest way to do this is to just have rigs for each depth. That doesn't mean to have 100 rigs set up. Three different rigs can cover your three different depths. Um, but what I will, the little bit of advice I will give you, if you're a little bit unsure, I'd always start in the deeper water. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, the th out of the three different depths, I'd start on the deeper one that you think there might be it. The reason for this is, if you're on the deeper one, you can get indications, you can look for signs and things like that of fish. Whereas if you're in the shallower water and the fish are deeper, you're not going to get no signs. So by starting in the slightly deeper water and working your way up throughout the day, um, that is probably the best way to go about it because as I say you're going to get indications you might foul look a few fish you know you're getting into liners etc etc if you're sat there and your rig's motionless then you can't give yourself an inkling you know you don't you can't tell where the fish are so like I said I'll always try and start in the slightly deeper water and work my way across chances are you might end up right across uh, in the grasses uh, where the fish are going to end up throughout the day one because it gets warmer quickest uh, and two, the fish are going to back off uh, and go towards them features. So, so as so like I said today, about depths. Now the reason the reason uh, I think it's so important is if you're sat there and you think that you're in the wrong depth of water, or you think that you know you stop catching, for instance, mainly it's because the fish have probably moved. Now you you've obviously been catching a few fish at a certain depth, certain area of peg, um, so you know the depth's right. Once you get that right, that's the hardest part try and get right and once you get that right the rest of it's easy because because you're putting such minimal bait in then what happens is once you find the depth of fish feeding it you can literally put a plummet on you can find the depth again and start again the fish don't the fish don't move right round lake they move a few feet at a time either side of where you've been fishing so by finding that depth again chances are you probably start catching again um, and as I say, it couldn't be simpler because you, you, you're feeding uh, one, once from at a time. All you need to do is do is repeat that process. Put your plummet on, a few pellets in a pot, find the depth, tap your bait in. And then obviously when you go back out, a few more pellets, tap your bait in, you're fishing. You're fishing in one spot, you've tapped in 20, 20 odd micras, which is not a lot of bait. Um, and all you're doing then is sat there and you sat knowing and you're really confident that the, one, the fish are in that depth of water uh, and two, there's some fish in front of you because you've already caught some. Uh, but if you get them few few things right, then chances are you'll probably catch a lot of fish. So going back to the depths of water, um, I've gone back. I've gone back out. Just tapped a little bit of bait in, like we just spoke about, um, and then obviously I got an indication straight away because I know that I'm fishing the right depth of water, and that's what it's all about. Nice and simple. Keep it dead simple. A um, few expanders, bit of micros, few tips about winter commercial fishing, and that's it. Dead simple. <laughs>